Welcome to AstroCast.TV, your source for news and information about astronomy and our solar system. Now, here are your hosts, NASA JPL Solar System Ambassadors, Greg Redfern and Greg People. Hello everyone, I'm Greg Redfern. And I'm Greg People. Welcome to AstroCast.TV. We're here to help you understand some of the exciting discoveries in space and in particular our solar system. And our sun. Our universe. Yes, Greg, with all the incredible things going on in the space sciences, many are calling this time right now the golden age of astronomy. Now, Mr. People, we hear that the sun is undergoing a new solar cycle. Can you tell us about that? Yes, Greg, solar cycle 24 begins. It's here. The long-awaited sunspot announcing the next solar cycle has made its way around the solar edge, or as scientists say, the limb. On January 3rd of this year, the little sunspot that could, also known as 10981, seemed like a normal little solar magnetic storm about the size of planet Earth. But when we take a closer look at it, something very interesting appears. It's actually the first spot of cycle 24. Spot 10981 is a leading indicator that we can expect to see changes with the sun's recently quiet level of activity. You see, every 11 years or so, the sunspot activity reaches a maximum intensity. Sunspots, prominences, and flares really pick up and put on a show. Peak sunspot activity is called solar maximum. Then, after several more years, activity on the sun's surface begins to die down and become quieter. That's about where we are now in 2008. It's called solar minimum. Now, how do we know for certain that little sunspot 981 is a member of the new cycle 24 and not 23? Well, it came around the sun's edge at a much higher latitude than sunspots from the last solar cycle. They came into view at the solar equator. Also, this spot had its magnetic north and south poles reversed compared to sunspot number 980 just below it in this image. Put those two things together and there you have it, the birth of a new solar cycle. It should be an exciting ride as the sun takes its first few steps of this new cycle. On to solar maximum. Mr. People, is there any kind of a safety issue involved in observing the sun? Yes, Greg, like you've been told your entire life, never look directly at the sun. And before we leave the sun, are there any kind of effects that the solar cycle will have on the Earth or its inhabitants that we should be aware of? Yes, there's good and bad effects that will happen. For one, on the bad side, it could knock out our satellites or increase the radiation level of the astronauts in space. But on the good side, you possibly could see some of the best auroras or northern lights you'll ever see in your lifetime. Now that would be very cool. Now that we have the sun covered, let's take a look at one of the exciting NASA missions exploring our solar system. NASA's Mercury Surface, Space Environment, Geochemistry and Ranging, or MESSENGER mission, is due to arrive in orbit around Mercury March 18, 2011. The Intrepid spacecraft accomplished the first of three flybys of Mercury on January 14, 2008 at 2.04 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at a distance of only 124 miles. It has been 33 years since the spacecraft flew by the planet closest to the sun, and it was Mariner 10 that did so in 1974 and 1975. Launched August 3, 2004, MESSENGER completed two flybys of Venus, the first completed in October 2006 and the second in June 2007. MESSENGER has passed a 2.4 billion mile mark, or about half the voyage to Mercury. Of course, Mercury is not 5 billion miles from Earth, but the flight path it has to take to reach the planet closest to the sun is a long and complicated one. MESSENGER returns some incredible photos of terrain never before seen by humanity. Perhaps the most intriguing were those of an area dubbed Spider Crater. Scientists will have much to keep them busy while analyzing a treasure trove of data. Doing so will help them learn more about Mercury and thereby better prepare them for the two remaining flybys and the nominal mission length of one year of data collection while in orbit. My favorite place in the universe, our very own moon, made headlines recently. The most detailed images ever obtained of the moon's south pole were made in the incredible movie you are watching. NASA used its solar system radar located in California to obtain many images in 2006 that then underwent two years of study, enhancement, and final production. 
The goal was to search for areas that are in permanent shadow and permanent sunlight at the lunar south pole during a full lunar cycle of approximately 28 days, which is what the movie shows. Such areas may be key to providing resources such as water and oxygen located deep within the shadowed regions and solar power from always sunlit peaks to future lunar habitats. NASA plans to land humans on the moon by 2020 and will fly two lunar missions by the end of the year, but more on that to come. Thanks for joining us on this episode of AstroCast. In the next episode, we will wander the rings and moons of Saturn and... We'll take a look at the Solar Dynamics Observatory. Do you have an astronomy question? Visit our website at astrocast.tv where you can ask us an astronomy question and we'll do our best to get you the answers. Tune in next time as we learn more about the wonders and mysteries of the universe in which we live and explore. Thanks for watching AstroCast. For more information on astronomy and our solar system, come visit us at astrocast.tv.